Hello everybody, this is Atle. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another special expedition. I must be a glutton for punishment after the Touch of Force experience, um, but I've ended up with a, with a really good truck in my fleet and that's spurring me on to do another one. And this is a special expedition and you can see from the map, so you will almost certainly all be guessing what it is I'm going for. I am going to, at least in this episode, attempt to unlock the Cosmodrome map, and hopefully in this episode, get the Zix 605R unlocked. So into the garage, and, uh, and the, the lesson learned from the Tatra Force unlock is don't go cheap, because going cheap costs pain. And what should have been a two hour recording for the Tatra Force ended up being a four hour recording and a bit of a nightmare. Um, so this one I'm doing slightly differently, and that means I'm basically arriving heavy. So let's get straight into it. Truck storage. Now I've got $48,000 available at the moment um, because I've done a few things to get ready for this and, uh, and it spent, I spent a fair bit of money getting the Tatra Force. I've got a Caterpillar forklift retained and ready to sell. That's $62,000 if I sell it. I'm going to sell two of these, I think. But one of them I've kept, just in case I decide to use it to move uh, cargo containers or cabins. But this one is available to sell if I need the money. But the start of this episode is I'm also arriving with a full Caterpillar fuel bunker. Because I don't want to be messing around with fuel on this episode. So that'll be 1600 litres plus the main tank. And that's the first thing that we'll deploy. So that's been to Michigan to pick up fuel at $2 a litre. I'm now paying 3500 to deploy it here. And I think there'll be four deployments to this map, four trucks that I'm bringing. Uh, but this is the first one. So let's get out and start staging things where I think I need them. So one of the things that I am doing in this episode that is slightly different as well as I am using my steering wheel. I've been talking about this steering wheel since Michigan. I have got it set up in a way that I am happy with. I've got a mouse and keyboard available so I can manipulate the camera with a mouse. Blast these. I'm gonna demolish all of this lot and then drive over it. Because uh, this is the exit that I'll be using for all of the trucks that are coming on this expedition. Let me just whack that into this block. Try and get over that. I seem to have picked up a container underneath my wheels. That's it. Bumped over it. All of that will despawn when I bring the next truck out of the map, hopefully. So uh, all I'm going to do with this, this is obviously coming out of the garage and I'm going to be driving past on this ice down below the ramp slope here quite frequently so this is where I'm going to be putting my fuel bunker and I'll just leave it here and anything driving past that needs fuel can come and get it and then when I'm finished I'll drive it back up to the garage or I'll leave it here until I come to a muir this is this fuel bunker has been sat in Hola Peninsula unused uh, since I left Cola so I haven't taken this to Yukon this has just been refueled and deployed here so I'm going to leave that there and then other trucks that need fuel will probably be passing down past in that direction. Uh, next deployment. Get into the garage. Uh, the next one I'm going to deploy is going to be the Tatra Force. And this is going to be the main workhorse of this expedition. I've got it configured. It's deploying from the Don region, so I've not used it anywhere else. I've just brought it from the Don region. It's got the crane on it because in my Yukon series, I did drive the Tatra Phoenix back to the garage so that I wouldn't have to buy a second crane. I don't think I need a crane on each of these. One crane shared between the two of them should be good enough. And it's as configured as I need it to be. So what the other thing I've done before this episode, it's got the biggest engine on it. It's got the advanced special gearbox. It's got the advanced heavy winch and the crane. And those first three items, the engine, gearbox and winch, have all come out of the 
as of 73.210. So this truck, this is the first time I've used it fully configured with its big engine. Uh, I like the way that they've done it so that the truck color scheme changes the sideboard bed and the crane to match. And then it happens to have a red and white bumper. I quite like that color scheme for it. So that's what I'm going to use. You know what? I've just realized that one thing I didn't do is put the chains on it. So let's just get this back in the garage. I do want snow chains on it. It's got the muds that were on it when I, when I recovered it in Don. So customize. Did I buy the chains? Yeah, I did. Let's get this one deployed and we'll make a start. So it's engageable all-wheel drive, engageable diff lock. The um, gearbox advanced special gives you five auto gears plus high and low, low ratio crawler gears, which is really useful. And I'm going to buy a trailer because as much as I hate to do this in hard mode, there may be a, a trailer available. For the bare minimum, Cosmodrome unlock. I've got to shift six, uh, 12 units of cargo. And this truck, uh, thanks to Alexa for pointing it out, but this truck can do the Holy Trinity, which means crane, sideboard bed, plus a trailer. And therefore, I am going to buy a four-slot ramped flatbed trailer. So that the 12 units of cargo that need to be shifted, I can do in two trips. And then now, we need to head out to the warehouse. Preferably without damaging it before I even leave the garage. So we've got a route here that I am using. There's bits of this episode where I'm, I'm using the strategy from Mr. Lone Wolf. So if, you, if you're looking for a guide on how to do this, look up Mr. Lone Wolf. Because this isn't going to be a guide. This is me following bits of Mr. Lone Wolf's. But I've got different trucks, right? I haven't got the same options that he uses. And I'm also doing it in hard mode, so I can't just recover to get fuel and, and so on. Which is why I've had to bring the cat. So it's a kind of modified hard mode version of how uh, Mr. Lone Wolf's recovery and un unlock of Cosmodrome and then recovery of the truck worked. That's my main source of inspiration, but I'm tweaking it for the differences for hard mode and the differences for my sort of play style, really, I suppose. But a lot of it, there's especially this first part, the route that I'm about to do. Let's turn that off. And I want to... I know it's only nine... I know it's only 19 litres, but fuel is going to be a thing. So, the, and, and this, apart from Holy Trinity, this also has a roof rack that carries 140. How many litres do I get on the roof? 160. So 160 litres of fuel in the roof of the Tatra Phoenix, which I really like. Uh, let me draw the map, actually. Let me draw... Let me draw the route that I'm going to take. I can't because it's not exposed, but basically I'm going to come across here. When I've opened up the map, I'll show you the rest of what I mean by this route. So Mr. Lone Wolf did this with two vehicles, each with one of these trailers, and basically did the drive once. I'm going to be doing the drive twice. So we're going to cross some fairly dangerous little bits of ice. I need my wits about me to not fall through. And also not get catapulted into the water by glitched ice chunks. Uh, I think I can go across this and it's solid once I get onto that. 
east by the shore. I think this stays solid all the way down. And then this is a slightly interesting and slightly dodgy bit because we have to jump over a gap between two lumps of rock. It should be all right. There we go. You gotta I'm trying to stay away from the edge that might be melting ice. But at the same time, you you don't pick your path carefully, there's great big boulders in the way. I already love this truck. Um, I've driven it a bit in my campaign save. This is the first time I've used it in my hard mode save. But I already love this truck. It's pretty fuel economic. I'm burning 16 litres a minute there, peak. Pulling uphill with a trailer on. But generally, when you get it out of diff lock, and especially if you're on a road and you can manage to get it out of a wheel drive, it'll run along in single digit fuel consumption, which for a truck of this size is quite remarkable, really. And then the very, very first thing we're going to do now that we've got to this warehouse is there's a recovery of a maintenance trailer or a equipment trailer rather warehouse trouble and we're going to do this this is step one basically uh, show the task oh here's another one sorry we're closed our supply trailer gets stuck in the marsh so unless someone pulls it out all i can offer is air however if you help us we can talk thirty six hundred dollars but more importantly access to location and that will open up a second warehouse loading thing on this map that gives us um, some of the materials we needed for the Cosmodrome map unlock. So we're just going to put this out of the way for a minute. So I've done a bit of practice with my, this is a Logitech G920, the sort of PC and Xbox version of the, of the Logitech steering wheel. And I've done a little bit of practice with it. But the one thing I would say is that it immediately felt more intuitive, being somebody who's driven cars and vehicles and trucks all his life. It feels more intuitive than trying to use a controller. So I immediately feel better about this, but camera angle has been my challenge. Now I've got a setup that allows me to access a mouse and keyboard if I need it. It's not bad. Right, so I'm now going to leave that truck there. That's that's done its job for a minute. And we go back to the garage. And now we do the third deployment. Which is... The Voron Grad. Which was used in Don for the Stage 2 Tatra Force recovery. And is coming to join me here. as my, um, I'd, kind of, I'd almost rather use a Tager just because I'm a bit more comfortable with the Tager in this format as a kind of a heavy scout, if you like. But I don't want to pay to 
deploy here from Yukon with a Tega and then deploy him back, whereas this is in Don and needs to go back to Yukon probably. It's just cheaper to bring it by here, I think. But anyway, importantly, let's get out and get working. So this one doesn't need to buy anything. But I can now show you the route. So the route that I used just then, for anybody who, who is trying this in hard mode, was this is I'm showing you now what I just did in the Tatra Force, just so you can see. Because when I'm following somebody else's guide, I like to be able to see exactly what they did. Was along there and up into the warehouse. So that's the route that I just did in the Tatra Force. What I'm going to do in the Voron Grad is start the same out here, down past the cat, and then I'm going to come this way, and I need to get to a broken bridge here and cross over and head up towards that um, warehouse. And, I, and I'm not retracing the same steps because there's another broken bridge, and um, I think Mr. Lone Wolf does some jumping off cliff stuff up here that <laughs> I, I don't fancy it because that sounds like a disaster if I'm driving. So, uh, all-wheel drive on. Let's get this down to the cat. Fill it up while I'm there. And then we're going off to get a trailer. And I'm using this one just because I need to get that trailer. It's a capable off-roader. It's got decent snow chains on. Uh, and we'll whack it into low. Diff block on. It should be capable of doing this job. I'm getting used to the shifter as well. It, it's a it's a funny game because you can't set the gearbox up with a Logitech G920 shifter and pedal setup. You can't set the shifter up in this game as a standard H. So if you think about a standard H setup, I've got the through the high low and low low as gears one and two. And then I've got like gear three is automatic and gear four is low middle. It's all a bit weird to get used to, but that's a game restriction. It does boggle my mind a little bit that a driving game, basically, it is a driving game, it doesn't have decent wheel support to allow you to build your own mappings. But there it is. Right, so we're on the ice. I've got to stay in tight enough to not fall into any broken ice so I'm hugging the coastline this way not trying to go fast I'll, la I'll time lapse it if it ends up being content that doesn't want to be shown at normal speed because it's too slow but I need to get far enough up this beach to expose the piece of road you can see a bridge just ahead of me pretty sure that's a broken one now I'm also, advance warning, I am going to fix that bridge. I'm pretty sure Mr. Lone Wolf didn't on his, and I, uh, for me personally, fixing that bridge is worth it. Uh, I might have wanted to go up that way. Let's go this way instead. Yeah. Then this should let me get down onto the ice. Now, let me open the map because I don't think I actually. Yeah, I didn't activate it, did I? 
So let's track it and put a marker where I need to be. I think I'll hug this side of the beach. Just got to stay on good ice. I don't really know the best route this way, but I'm just going to stay on good ice and go in the direction I need to go. contest I won't be doing that I don't think <laughs> did I see a watchtower in this room yeah okay that's too far off my beam path ace adventure that sounds like a POI type of thing and I'll worry you know I'll come back to a mirror properly obviously all in good time just keep following this road a little bit so I'm 230 meters from my target question is whether I want to go left or right here to get to it or neither and go straight I kind of want to just go cross country here really doesn't feel like it could be any worse on the road This is a fairly shallow little puddle of water. Not too worried about navigating this. This snow is what's slowing me down for the minute. There we go. I am starting to think that maybe Mr. Lone Wolf's way of leaping off cliffs is, is quicker. But it's also more risky. And in hard mode, that could be a material thing. But anyway, here's our trailer. We've got to get this supply trailer back to the warehouse, not back to the garage. So it's slightly different to what we've just done on the way in. Engine off. Let me have a little think about how I want to get back. Because we're not taking it... Yeah, we're, we're not taking it all the way back to the garage. We've just come from here with this. But that's not where we want to go. So not retracing our steps exactly isn't ideal. I'm slightly tempted to just loon it and try the way that Mr. Lone Wolf did it in his video. Live a little, shall I? I've got the option of bringing the tatter in to help me out if I need it as well, but I don't at the moment. That isn't the plan. My plan is not to use the tatter, and I've deployed three vehicles so far: the cat fuel bunker, the Thatcher Force, and the Voron Grad. And my fourth vehicle that I intend to deploy is the Loaf for a fuel and supplies boost um, anybody, anybody who's watched my series knows I have a mixed relationship with the loaf but it, it, you know it, it is useful for the thing I'm going to use it for and it obviously is useful in the right hands anyway mine just aren't the right hands for it so yeah I don't intend bringing the tatter in if I can help it where do I want to go? I want... Try that. These dolly trailers aren't the best thing to be towing. Even when you've got a truck like this one. The Grad has just got a low saddle on it. Partly because I don't believe I need to do any cargo with it. I could always put it back in the garage and change that if I chose to. But I don't believe I need to do cargo with it today. Also... 
because at some point, if I choose to, there is a low saddle fuel trailer that may be of use to me. Get out of this sticky stuff. At least there's plenty of trees in the ground to use. Thanks for that, devs. I appreciate that effort for sure. Right, I'm going to use the road for a minute as an easier route than going over the snow, but we're going to come to a broken bridge. So I'll have to dive off the side of the bridge, go around a bit of ice. Most people watching this will have seen Mr. Lone Wolf's video already. You may not remember it because you may have watched it when it was new. I'm coming late to this game and I watched it several times in the last week while I was thinking about this episode. Um, so what I'm going to try and do going up this clear isn't normally the sort of thing I would consider, but it does save a lot of time. The alternative is driving quite a long route around and I don't really want to do that. The, the saving grace for this is there's plenty of trees. So let's just use them. Uh, so winch. Then I need to try and get... that one up to a, something big and solid up there and I might end up dropping the trailer and then pulling the trailer up on a separate on a line separately this, this is going to be difficult enough without a trailer Right, using the suggestion made in comments that I forgot for several episodes, and I do pay attention, but then I forget things, is I've got a winch on. That's stopping me sliding back down the hill, but I can attach a second line, and it releases the first one at the same time as attaching a second one, so you don't fall. Brilliant, brilliant suggestion. So thank you very much for that. And this time I remembered it. Is that going to let me go to the... I think I might want to drop a trailer at this point. And then use the winch. To get me up. see if I can get do the same trick or whether I can't do it to a point that's already on so let's just see if I'm able to release that without falling too far I just wanted that line on there oh and then I'll let go of it oh, oh. hit the wrong button put my lights on as well and break off. Come on. Right. So now, and break. And it's pitch black for you guys. Sorry for that, but this won't take too long. Hopefully, we'll be out of this bit now. Need to get a line onto the trailer. I can't see. I can't see the trailer. Have I gone too far forward? Uh, I put it in reverse. I get limited reversing lights. Trailer is.
yeah, I've gone too far forward. So I've got to back it up a bit, unfortunately. That's a bit there, dodgy, isn't it? Try that. That's on the trailer, I think. Yes. Okay. Back into the correct mode. I can't winch forwards, but I can drive forwards. And hopefully bring the trailer with me. I'm just letting the winch pull me back because I'd like to get that trailer attached. I can get that trader attached through magic. Close enough? Nope, not quite. Um, need to pull it, and I'm bullying it over the cliff, basically. But uh, I may as well. I'm not going to do this one, but I may as well tag it. And then we can now. Beautiful job, Mr. Lone Wolf. <laughs> that was fun. I, I don't know whether it's quicker to go the, the long way around, but that was certainly more fun than going the long way around. That's your trailer. And now we go and deliver. And it's not far, it's just down this road. It's not, not reverse onto it, though. It feels... Yeah, it's not, it's not far. So that's the first... And technically, you don't have to do this, but as ably described by others, Warehouse Trouble gives you access to resources you need in a much more efficient way than if you were to try and unlock Cosmodrome by crafting metal rolls, and you've got to go and get the metal rolls, and it's a, it's a bit of a nightmare if you don't do it this way. And here we are. This is the warehouse where the Thatcher Force is parked. I enjoyed that. That was fun. Different style of doing things to how I would have. I wouldn't have thought of doing that myself. I don't think. A lot of people have seen me do plenty of crazy things. Like the notorious um, rescuing a scout off a cliff in Yukon. Instead of using a big crane, I just bullied it with a Ford F750, but anyway. Right, here we go. Done. Engine off. Oh, I didn't read that then. I meant to turn the engine off and I closed the dialogue. But more importantly, that's that done. So next, and, I, and I've got some fuel in this. All I need to do with this Voron Grad now is get it back to the um, cat which will be easier after I do the next thing. And this, I'm going to do another optional step that's, that isn't necessary. Uh, in fact, let's go and tag that first, because it'll make more sense. So there's a broken bridge, and I'm going to fix it. Now that I've got access to these materials, and it's not strictly necessary for Cosmodrome, and Mr. Lone Wolf and others don't do it, but I think it looks like it would save quite a bit of time. It's worth the effort to me and it sends the grad in the direction that it needs to go anyway I'm just using the grad to tag the task because I can't remember what materials are needed I know it's metal beams but I can't remember what else is needed um, and then we'll load those things onto the touch of force fix the bridge and then come back and get the first batch of items needed for Cosmodrome access Steady. A little bit of speed wobble. Yeah, so this bridge dead ahead of us. And I'll just tuck myself in from the side so that I don't obstruct the force when it's here to do deliveries. And brake on. Engine off. 
tag the task. There used to be a bridge here. There's still part of a bridge there, mate. I have no idea how, but rumour has it the locals sold it for scrap. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, it has to be restored ASAP if we want to use this warehouse at all. Will you help deliver the materials? $6,800. That's helpful. And I will do that. So two lots of metal beams. But if I look at the task here, it also wants two service spare parts. That's the bit I couldn't remember. So into the force. And I'm, it's going to be difficult for me, but I promise to try really hard not to do Star Wars jokes unless it's May the 4th. I will try. But at the end of the day, I am using the force, aren't I? So, what do I need? I need two lots of metal beams. This one gives me a, a limited supply, but 10 metal beams. And then the other one must give me the service spare parts. So let's load up two metal beams. Actually, what we're going to do here is we're going to get the trailer in position. Turn some lights on. Get the trailer in position. And we'll put both the metal beams on the trailer. Uh, for anybody who might be watching this as a special expedition rather than and, and hasn't seen the rest of my series. My self-imposed policy is to use the crane to load. I don't do auto load in hard mode unless the game doesn't allow me to use crane mode. Cargo loading platform first lot of metal beams. Crane mode. Uh, dark unfortunately but what can I do? I wonder if we're currently delivering the bits of this bridge that supposedly the locals stole for scrap. It'd be funny, wouldn't it? Because if that's true, they'll just steal it again anyway. Unpack. Repack. So that has packed the trailer and truck with what I need for this bridge. Get it done. These trailers aren't, aren't my favourite because not being a sideboard, there's a, there's a better than even chance of things falling out of them. So you've got to drive really carefully. And careful is not my middle name. So yeah, the, the but I'm driving a truck that's got a crane. So if things fall off, there's I have the option to reload it. It's another reason that I personally in hard mode prefer loading because I'm carrying a crane generally anyway. And I suppose there's a little bit of an RP element to it. To me, it feels right. I was foot hard on the brake again. Uh, engine off. Cargo management. Two metal beams. Cut scene for that face. That's a lot of scrap metal they sell, doesn't it? And then service spare parts, one, two. And that lays the deck of the bridge as well. Like quite a nice sort of intricately designed suspension bridge. I quite like that. So $6,800, that helps. Which is my money back up a little bit. Bridge to the warehouse. That's better. We'll be getting the supplies for the region in a jiffy now that we have a good connection to the warehouse. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, I've got to turn this train around. That is always traumatic, but I'll do my best.
kind of tactic is just to bully it so that I can turn around and hope the trailer goes with me well enough. But I mean, uh, it's, it's a tight space to turn around anyway without a trailer on the back. What I don't want to do is tip the truck over. Might be better dropping the trailer and then just turning it with a winch. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna detach the trailer. And then I'm gonna turn myself around well enough. And if I have to, I can even use the crane. But if I can get just the sweet spot position to put a winch from there to there and then the trader should aggressively be pulled around in a, it with me Get myself, make sure I'm on the road. Don't really care what happens to the trailer because they don't take damage. <laughs> Not quite what I intended. Let's see if I can get off the loading ramps and then see if it will follow me around. But it will, I know it will because it won't have a choice because physics. Because the winch won't snap. And eventually, trailers just end up behaving. Pull it in, see if it will let me attach. Yes, it will. So now, engine off. We're going to be doing a heap of work. Name of the contract. The road to the launch site goes through a tunnel. Trouble is, is it's been blocked. And neglected for many years. We can allocate machinery for clearing, but we'll need some materials. So I've got to take two lots of metal beams, four lots of planks, four lots of service spare parts. I can get them all now that I've done. That's why we did the warehouse trouble. It's sorry, in this the right way again. Sorry about that. Now that we've done the the warehouse trouble, I can get all of those resources from this warehouse, and I've now got a bridge fixed that allows me to come down to this destination more easily than going across around the long way i think i think to me that bridge is worth fixing you've got spare materials for it so i need to load up two lots of metal beams and two wooden planks or some combination thereof because i've got 12 you i've got to do two trips it doesn't matter which order i do them in so up to the warehouse and load up little bit of frame jutter there because my mouse wandered off to the side monitor. And again, because I had to fix something on the side monitor that the mouse had clicked on OBS, but it's all looking good. Still recording? Hello, this is Editor Atley. Just jumping in with a quick explanation of something that's just happened. Uh, at the point of recording this episode, I noticed that when I looked at my side monitor because of a little mouse wandering issue, I hadn't been recording game audio. Now, I don't know why, because the first part of the episode has game audio fine. And then about half an hour in, the game audio stopped from a recording perspective. And the last segment that you've watched, I've done my best to edit audio from another part of the video over so that there's some engine noise that matches the truck that's being driven and i've done my best to match that up but if anybody's noticed any audio discrepancies in the previous segment i do apologize for that 
audio is quite important on these videos but I'd rather do this than leave out the footage of me fixing the bridge and doing warehouse trouble just an explanation as to why there is a continuity break here now we're getting back to the original footage thank you so uh, special expeditions and changing my setup and what's caused this is that I am using my Logitech G920 steering wheel instead of a controller. That means I'm sat in a kind of sim rig setup and my side monitor is actually on the other side of the room. I can only I can see it from a distance but I can't read it and therefore I hadn't noticed that the audio meter wasn't showing until my mouse went off and it's possible that it, it has been working. Um, and that something I did when my mouse wandered to the wrong side of the monitor caused the problem. But it is possible that I have got audio. But I have my doubts. I think I've probably recorded an hour with no game sound. Which is a real shame. But if anything, it might make, end up meaning that this special expedition is quite a lot shorter than it would have been. I'm loving this Tatra Force. I've got to kind of assume that the audio hasn't worked and therefore I might have to repeat some of the things I've said. And then editor will have to sort it all out. Editor being me by the way. I don't have a I don't I'm not fancy enough to have somebody else editing for me. So let's see what I can get from this one. Cargo management. So I can get the service spare parts of which I need four. And I can get the wooden planks, of which I need also four. Doesn't matter which order I deliver them in. So yeah, let's pull forward, drop a trailer, get myself into loading position and get them loaded up. And I'll just do this side for a minute. Do the, do the metal beams on a second trip. So drop a trailer. Cargo management. Let's do service spare parts, four of them onto the trailer via the loading platform because I don't like to auto load in hard mode. Do four of these on the red trailer. And I'll time lapse this bit as it's going to be pretty slow. This Touch of Force is a great truck. The crane is so much better than the blue cranes that you get on the rest of the uh, Russian... I, I keep saying Russian trucks because you know, they're, they're kind of non-US trucks, but most of this game's content is divided at the moment into uh, Russia and US. So I, I'm aware that some of the vehicles that I mention as being Russian are actually Czech. So apologies for that. That's me not really knowing the distinction... Uh, which trucks are originate from where? I think the Tatras might be the ones that somebody told me they're actually Czech. Right, that's the last one of those that I need. And then two wooden planks. And then next time I'll need to get two metal beams and two more wooden planks. This crane isn't the best for getting close to the sort of front of the bed. The geometry of the crane just makes it difficult. I'm just going to do it easy mode. I'm going to make this easy on myself by 
pack in what I've got and then pick up that other one and put it on top. So that's the thing that I've just learned is that this crane is really struggling with putting stuff on the short end of its crane reach. Can't bring it in any tighter than that without it going down, forcing itself down. Let's just see if that will pack. Yes. Right, and now we've got to get on. Uh, restore the crane. Reattach the trailer. Pack those service spare parts. Uh, quite a long process loading that. I'll have time lapsed it to make it bearable. Attach a trailer and pack your cargo. So that's all six units of cargo packed. Now I've just got to deliver it without dropping it, <laughs> which may be easier said than done. Let's go. Let's go. So we're now he heading to the Cosmodrome Tunnel. Let's just mark the route that I'm going to use for that. Or the bits of it that I can see, because some of it will be still be Fog of War. So now I've got a bridge open. I'm basically going to come down here over the bridge. Down onto this ice and follow this ice down to my fuel. I'll refuel and then I'm going to be driving around here. And the rest of it will become clear once I get past into the fog of war so I can actually see a bit further. But that's the route that I'm going to do for the first part of this delivery. Let's get going. Right, so I'm going to refill. I haven't used my roof supplies yet. then onwards. Now this is quite a rocky bit. It's not so much breaking ice as being a challenge, but these rocks are quite nasty. And I don't expect to tip over, but you never know. It's, there's a risk if this trailer tips enough, it can tip the cargo off. I think I will whack this into diff lock mode just so that these rocks are a little bit easier to manage. Being careful of that trader. trying to jiggle myself enough to get purchased to get past these couple of rocks that are catching me there we go did we go do we come on please i 
we got to do a pretty gnarly ice crossing in a minute. Um, I practiced this in my campaign save. So although I have based this on uh, Mr. Lone Wolf's series, Mr. Lone Wolf's walkthrough, there are things I'm doing slightly differently. The good news about my publishing schedule is I've got basically two weeks to turn whatever's ended up being recorded into something that hopefully is watchable. And I do believe, even if I've lost the first half or the first hour of recording, I do think that the main bit of this content I'm showing, which is the heap of work and driving through Cosmodrome hopefully to get the six. Let me just walk, drive over that. Right, so this is this is a bit gnarly, especially with this trailer. But I am taking a different line. If anybody's watched other guides and Mr. Lumble's guide, I'm taking a slightly different line here. I've got to set it up right there. Diff lock. So instead of turning sharp left here, I'm going to push straight on over to the next crusty ledge. And you have got to try and go fairly close to the water without falling in it. So it's quite a dangerous route. And then from here, we're kind of back on solid ice again. I need to turn a fairly wide circle because I don't want to mess around with this dolly trailer. Lift lock off so I don't do any damage to my gearbox. So I got to fairly gently. Give myself a bit more turning circle without tipping that trailer over and losing its cargo. But that's all good ice then. All of that, all of that, after that, where I left the crust, everything from there to here is good ice, including through this little gap, and then up that slope to a fuel station that at the moment doesn't supply fuel. But if Map Runner is right, and no reason to believe it's not, when you reinstate that fuel station, it's two dollars a litre. 
and given the way that all the other regions since Michigan have been that's a really welcome addition the fact that this map such a big map as this has a reasonable price for fuel uh, that one to there please I'm liking Amir. I know it's got a scary reputation. It's like uh, in, in Mandra, but harder. But I'm liking the challenge of it. I will tag this task. I think it's for reinstating this fuel station, which basically means rescue a fuel trader, which I don't know whether I'll do that today. Well, I, won't, I, don't, I don't expect to do that today. Main thing is it's tagged, and then I'm going to go and do this delivery at the tunnel. So the fuel consumption there, 85 litres to do that from where we left the cat. I think for such a big truck full of cargo with that trailer, that's pretty good. Uh, cargo management, we're delivering two wooden planks and four service parts. We now only need two metal beams and two more wooden planks. So back it up and turn it round. And we've got to retrace steps back all the way back to the warehouse basically which i'm empty i'm obviously going to keep it recording anyway but if nothing eventful happens in the interest of time on the episode i may either heavily time lapse this or even jump cut it if it's a pretty boring drive back we go just got to connect up back the metal beams and off we go Six slots packed, two metal beams, two wooden planks. Check. Let's go. Put it in forward. <laughs> Onwards. I keep an eye on the trailer again. Don't want to be dropping any cargo. But you please. That coming into daylight.
Approaching this in full dark fills me with a little bit of trepidation because I can't see my line so easily. But the force has got fairly good lights on it. I like the little working lights off the side of the cab. That's a nice feature. started turning in too soon then. I want to line from out here so I can catch that crust at the right angle. Back it up slightly. Let me adjust that line slightly. So we've got my trailer, it's dark so you guys can't see it so well, I can just about make out. I've still got my trailer and it's still got two metal beams on it. So far, so good. My heart is racing like crazy, that's the most dangerous part of the whole thing. That crusty ice. And it's not so much the driving of it, it's the fact that it is prone to glitch. And when I've messed around with it before, I've had scouts like flung in the air by those ice things glitching out on the physics engine. Gentle turn. There we go. So on um, Mr. Lone Wolf's guide for this, he uses two vehicles and goes in, in Envoy. And I don't think I can handle the stress of that. I think the slightly slower approach of doing two trips works for me a bit better. I've still got metal beams, haven't I? Yes. I wish there was a like towable four slot sideboard. That would be nice. There's a towable two slot sideboard.
get a bit of help from these trees. So the one area, and I was told this in comments, the one area where this force is weaker is sticky mud, like, like that. Uh, it doesn't have the wheel size or tyre types to dominate that type of muddy terrain. Right, so here we are. This is all of the cargo. Two metal beams, one, two. Two wooden planks, done. Stage completed. So now we need to deliver a service trailer. And the service trailer is way over in this corner of the map. But it's basically a simple road all the way there and back. So it's not difficult at all. One thing I am going to do though is track this fuel trailer so that I can see where it is because I might be able to slurp some fuel out of it. I don't need the red trailer anymore. That can just stay there until I come back to uh, a muir in my main sort of sequence of play. I had intended using the Voron Grad to try and get this fuel trailer because it's a semi fuel trailer. Uh, I assume it's got fuel in it because otherwise how would it unlock the fuel station but um, yeah I don't know. I'm, a, I'm at least going to have a look at where it is and see if with the horse I can drag it, although it's a saddle trailer, drag it into such a way that I can pull fuel out of it. Because I'd like to go into Cosmodrome with as close to a full tank as possible. Because the Zix needs fueling. trailer oh it's on its side i'm gonna have a little look at this before i continue with the contract and see if i can just pull that trailer enough that i can reasonably refuel from it on the way past let's first of all see if it's got any fuel in it but i think it probably has if need be i can just refuel from it here yeah, it's full, 3,700 litres. So that's going to be handy when I come back to the map properly. But I am going to put a rope on it and see if the horse can pull it in any kind of reasonable way. Because I'd have to get it on its wheels to be able to attach it with a grad anyway. The grad has got the right type of saddle for it, but... Can the force pull it? What an absolute beast of a truck. I love it. I've not got this thing on its wheels, but I have got it to the road. So I can, at the very least, I can do drive by fuelings with it.
And now I'll try and pull it onto its wheels. And then if I chose to, I could bring the grad. I'm not going to deliver it, obviously, because I want to drain the fuel out of it before I do that. I'm not that daft. Ooh, steady. Right, it's back on its wheels, so I could I could just turn up and pick that up now, but I'm not going to... Like I say, I'm not going to deliver it, because I think I need its fuel more than the fuel station does. But effectively, once that's down to 370 litres, I can hand it in, and I think that fuel station then becomes a $2 per litre supply, which is good. It's a fairly long trek in this, and this isn't this isn't a fast truck. It's an effective truck, but it's not fast at this sort of stuff. So I'm going to whack it into high and see how it does. See if it will pick up a bit of speed. But this is a long, twisty route down into the other corner of the map. But it's not a dangerous route. It seems to be a pretty good road. And I have um, nothing but good vibes from this Amur map so far. I'm enjoying it. There's some bits of nasty snow and ice as to be expected and I just... When you've spent a bit of time on the map, you'll know which bits to avoid and which bits you can drive through. At the moment, I don't know that, so if I get stuck, it's because I just don't know the map. There's a broken bridge just ahead on the road to the left. I don't know if you ever get to fix it, but there's an alternate bridge on this side. It's not a, not a massively long detour, so thanks for that, devs. I'm really looking forward to coming to a mirror properly. Right, let's get out of the mud. And then let me just change to the correct contract. A heap of work track it because it will show me where but we're almost there basically if you look on the map we're not far off we're going to turn in here and then follow our noses up to a bit of a industrial unit not sure what that is i'm not going to tag that that's content for when i come here properly Camera jankiness. I had too much of that so far, so I'll forgive that. And around this corner is a service trailer. That's it. Oh, actually, uh, I'll forget. Let's just repair what I can now from the trailer, not from me. It's only 23 points. My repair points are important because they're needed for the Zix. I am seriously liking this touch of force. <laughs> I'm seriously liking the fact that I've got some free service points in my trailer. So I've got to get this back to the tunnel, and then that will be um, Cosmodrome map unlocked.
and then I've got one more truck to deploy. There's a garage just inside Cosmodrome map. I will go into there with as full a fuel tank as I can manage. And then I am going to deploy a can loaf and stick it in this sideboard bed in the back of, and take it with me as an extra 200 litres of fuel plus repair points if I needed them or the Zix. Quite a big expedition, there's, a, there's um, but I would actually say so far Is it as much work as the horse unlock? Yeah, it probably is. So far, it's not been as bad a unlock as I expected. I previously talked about it being several episodes, but that's me trying to keep it under an hour per episode. And I think for a special expedition, it's valid to be a bit longer than my normal duration. Um, and personally, I kind of prefer the idea of getting it all done in one episode if I can. That's gone through there in fifth gear auto. I've just noticed I was looking at whether or not I should change gears. And that has just powered through that in fifth gear without dropping a gear at all. It dropped a bit of suspension but not dropped any gears. So that's not bad. Who needs high range if you can cruise along in fifth? Oh, there you go. Steady. Steady. Steady, Atlee. The, tra the truck was fine. The trailer nearly went over. And it is possible for trailers to pull the truck over. The truck can get through something and the trailer pulls it over. So let's fuel up. Because I need to try and get in with as much fuel as possible and in that vein let's turn off all wheel drive see if this will cope or is that a false economy because it's wheel spinning more I can almost see that fuel semi-trailer being taken into into Cosmodrome and parking at the garage or maybe just bring through something that lets me empty it out. I'm not sure where it's most usefully located just yet. So before delivering it, I want to repair that bit of damage that I did to myself. Service trader into the force, please. 40 points of damage done. And then this will deliver and that is going to open up Cosmodrome.
And that's kind of stage one done. Thank you for your work. We cleared the path and reinforced the ceiling of the tunnel to prevent future accidents. $17,000. Thanks for that. $17,000. Blimey. Nice bit of guitar music there on the um, intro screen. And then you can see a building off to my right. That's the garage. We just need to get there. Uh, I think this lake is, is a trap. So I'm going to take the road. I think that swing shovel is indicating that it's a trap. All of that ice looks to me like it's breaking ice. It'd be cool if we had to rescue that swing shovel and put it on a ramp flatbed. If there was a way of craning it out. Loading it onto a flatbed. Uh, I will use all-wheel drive here. There's no point in me not tagging this. I'm not activating the tracking on it, but at least I know what it is I need. big old power pole that's gonna be my best chance so presumably I can fill this in with some logs it'll make it a little bit less treacherous but I only need to cross it once this time needed to make more effort to get two wheels up on the log on the side. I tried that and I felt like I got a bit stuck so I thought I'd bully my way through but like I say proper mud is the most dangerous thing for this truck. That was a bit harder to get that's a bit harder to get through than I expected. So that's a that's gonna be a priority fix job when we come here properly. Because I'm assuming we're gonna be coming through here fairly often. This is all fuel I don't really want to be spending, so There we go. Yeah. Yeah, that's a gnarly mess, that one. So that's something that we're going to prioritise. In to discover the garage. Don't need to go in the garage, I just need to discover it. So that I can deploy the can lope here. And then load the lope in the back. When I practiced this on my campaign mode, I didn't take a low, and the um, Tatra Force on its own didn't have enough fuel to rescue the Zix. 
because it needs 380 litres and it burnt too much getting there for even its roof rack to be enough. So that's why I'm taking an extra loaf shaped roof rack. It's like that's a blue trailer ahead. I didn't notice that when I did my campaign test. Looks like it got loaded into it. More bags of cement, my favourite. Did I actually tag the garage? Didn't think I had. I don't want to go in there. What I do want to do though is go in. My cell. Rack storage. Can low. Deploy. And it's in Michigan because I wanted the, the supply points. It's just the easiest place for me. For, for a loaf that was stuck without fuel in Amandra, going via Michigan is a little bit of an indulgence. But the quickest way I could think of to get supply points. And I'm just going to load this into the back of the bed of the Phoenix. Which, as you know, I'm not great at doing, but hopefully this crane will do it no problem. We love you coming with me, mate. Yeah, you don't have to swing like that. What's going on with you? Let's see if it'll rotate back. Trying to get both of its wheels in without it falling out again. There we go. Engine off. Change truck. Store the crane and pack the truck. And what we're going to do now is go and get ourselves a Zix. So there's a task here to remove these rocks, which I'm not going to do, and I won't bother even tagging it, because I'm going to climb over them. Just back it up a little bit, give me to have a little bit of a run. Pole help me helping me. This worked yesterday. There we go. And we follow our, follow our noses down the road for a bit. Stay on this road until we get to a um, tree-based blockage. So one of the other things I need to do while I'm in a muir, but it will not be this episode, 
is I need to go and get myself the active suspension for the as of 73210. I'm gonna put a safety line on because this is a bit of a bit of an angle. Just safety first. Uh, yeah, so the 7322 twin as of the active suspension upgrade for it is on the next map over again. So, so and I've, I've forgot the name of the map, and I don't think I, I'm going to be able to pronounce it anyway. Um, but yeah, it's not on Cosmodrome. It's on the next map on, which I won't have time, and it's not justified for me to add that to this special expedition. But it is possible that I might leave the Zix on this map with the low to, and possibly with the war on grad until I've got that upgrade because that's a really key upgrade for me I don't know what that is I don't think that's an upgrade I think that's just a wrecked car Right, so pretty much here, I need to leave here or somewhere here. I need to leave the road and get to that ice. Because I think around this corner is where the tree based road blockage is. And again, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to bypass it. Now I've got to just, uh, just negotiate this without finding any breaking ice to fall through. And then immediately comes into some breaking ice. get my left wheels up on that's it right that'll do that wasn't too bad I think this stays solid now we have to jump into the water but it it looks deeper than it is that isn't deep at all so we jump down here and then just turn immediately left the driver's going to get wet feet but it'll be okay Misadventure. I'm not going to pick that up. That's future outlay when we come here to do this region properly. Don't worry about that. A bit of a deep sump there. Don't like the look of that. Let's avoid that. on it'd be cool if you could have the lights of the lope on as well i'd even consider if you could leave the lights on on a second vehicle but without the engine running i'd even consider putting the lope in backwards to give me decent vision behind me as well 
for reversing. Right, so I am not diving into this. Looks like there's a helicopter in there. I'm not I'm not exploring, I'm just going where I know the Zix to be. And I can show the route once once all the fog of war's gone, I can temporarily put myself back in the garage and show the route that I used to get here. Because obviously, uh, and then another part of this is I need to get this horse back to the garage so that I can retain it and take it to um, Yukon. But I have to say, I could not be happier than with the way this is performed on this expedition. So there's a watchtower right there, but I'm not going for it. Partly because it's exploration and that should be done on the proper season. And partly because it's a bit of a muddy swamp in there and I don't fancy getting stuck. That looks like a muddy pit to me. So that watchtower can wait until I come here properly with a scout. And what I've got to do now is get myself past these rocks and onto the road on the other side. So I can probably see enough now to show you where I want to go. Uh, I want to come across here and across that bridge. Because the Zix is like there, it's really close now. But there's lots of swampy, muddy mess here. Not entirely sure the best way through. Try this because there's a couple of trees there that I think I can pull myself with. Don't like it. So it's a Tatra Force trap, but there's a tree line there. I can use that tree line, even if the mud is a bit swampy. Try the old lateral movement trick. There we go. I just wanted to get on that big tree. So pulling my tail around was enough to let me move closer to the tree. I get tail onto that. Yeah, I can. That'll help a lot. This muddy stuff is horrible. But at least they've been kind enough to put something in there that you can winch from. Bit of an Achilles heel, isn't it, for this truck? Which is fine, because no one truck could be amazing at everything. Make the game boring as hell. Try and get out of the mud onto the snow and then just over the brow there is some rocks hopefully that lets me get to the bridge that I'm after now we're on the trail but it doesn't mean to say it's the end of the nasty mud at least we're on the trail
Yowza. That was a bit intense. I mean, I, I, I've got the low, but I don't want to... I don't really want to be spending fuel on this sort of thing. I should have a proper look to see if there's a fuel trailer nearby, but... At the moment... I can almost sent that Zix just ahead of me. Now, I don't know if that waypoint is anywhere near accurate. I just run, randomly put it down in the fog of war. Let me have a quick look. See what the map tells me. Yeah, so you can see there the back wheels of the Zix. So my waypoint, as a guess, wasn't too far off, was it? That is the Zix. So we are 140 meters from our goal. We've got to do a little bit of rock climbing to get there. But it shouldn't be too bad. Gotta go up this rock base, which we can get some help from a conveniently placed tree. Taking a bit of engine damage to do it, but needs must, it'll be worth it. It is also a yeah, pretty good expose of how good this touch of force is, though, isn't it? That it can do things, I guess. Does it fit through that gap? It should do. Feels like that gap's a bit tighter than I'll remember. What I'm going to do is attach my tail to that because sometimes that angle and help you get through. Nope. I need I need a winch off the front to pull me maybe that. Nope. Oh, there we go just broke through just as I was giving up and was going to try something else. Where is it? I think I might be okay to just go down onto the ice from here, but I'm not going to because I can't remember. I'm going to continue going in what looks like the right line. I don't even know what just happened, but it wasn't what I planned. So now I'm hoping I can get onto the ice because I've kind of fallen off my path. I'll try and get through these little, this gap in these trees. Yeah, that wasn't intended, people. So, bear with me. Try and get ourselves back.
that that was not intended. I didn't. I, I meant to stay on the kind of trail. I'm hoping that I can get to it from this side of the ice. Looks like it though. Let's avoid any breaking ice. That was not the angle of approach I wanted to do. And it spent a bit more fuel than I wanted to do as well. But there... Is the Zix 605R. And previous expeditions I have... Uh, paid to recover. But I've set myself a rule... At some point in my gameplay that became unacceptable to me. Uh, handbrake on. You can hear radiation. There's a Geiger counter. And it kind of looks... I, I can't work out whether there's a... Um, is it a flying saucer in there? There's like a round thing. It looks like a rocket, but it also looks like there's something that's too big to be part of a rocket. So I wonder if they're trying to say there that that's a, a flying saucer type thing. But anyway, ignoring that, let's... That's not what we're here for. Stargazer. They say something fell not far from here before the Cosmodrome was built. Whatever it was, it's not there anymore, but it looks like they left a truck behind. Probably unusable. We still better check. $2,700 plus a Zix 605R. Arguably the best truck in the game from everything that I've heard. Start tracking. And then we need to give it repair points and fuel. And I'm just hoping I've got enough of both. I know I've got, I'm pretty sure I've got enough repair points. So, here's the moment of truth. Repair points from my trunk. Yeah, I won't take them out the can loaf just yet. From my trunk into the Zix 605R. 168 needed and I've got 300, so yes, no problem. The repair's done. Fuel. Refuel. So drain the loaf. Drain me, because I can take some back. Hang on, that wasn't what I meant to do. Wrong button. Drain me. Drain my roof. Still need a bit more. Change truck. Oh, I've got to unpack it. Can't jump into it while it's packed. Now change truck into the low. And then refuel. Done. Wonderful. Zix 605R is now mine. I didn't read what it said, sorry. I got a little bit giddy with excitement there. So let's look at fuel again. My roof rack into the force. Because the force has got to get out. And then the Zix. So I'm, uh, I can't make my mind up how I want to do this. The loaf on the roof is completely empty, so at the moment there's no contribution from the loaf. Uh, map. I need to get away from that. I wonder if there are any fuel trailers nearby. So somewhere over here, I think there's another gateway into the next map. So let's look at the global map. Yeah. Chernokomensk. 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 In there. In in there is the upgrade for the as of 73210. And I want it, but it's not going to be this episode. So the safest thing to do is to get them out in convoy and worry about the 73210 as a separate problem. Get, just get both of these trucks out. Because they've got enough fuel between them, hopefully, to do that. No, I'm in the wrong truck. 
I thought it was in there. Let's get away from that Geiger counter and have a think. Better think about repacking my roof rack in the boot. I don't, this isn't the way I came in apart from I, when I fell down through those trees. I don't know if this is an acceptable way out, but let me, just so that I've done it, jump in. And for the first time, drive the Zix. So it's always on all-wheel drive. I don't know whether it needs an engine upgrade. It's got, I think, the only tyres it ever is going to get. I don't think there's any suspension upgrades for it. So it might be a case of just engine and winch and that's it pretty much rocking. Uh, I think it can also take a roof rack of supplies, which is a, a pretty important thing. Um, I'm in two minds as to what to do, because one, one part of me thinks, leave this special episode here and use both of these trucks to go off and get the as of 73.210 active suspension. Uh, probably up through here is a safe option, isn't it? That's going to take me back to the route. In fact, that's probably the safe... No, no, I don't think you can... I don't think you could have gone up that rock that I just drove down. So it might be a case of leaving this special episode here, doing the research to find out where there might be some fuel near enough for me to go and dash and get some fuel. And call it good. And then and then I record something else that is basically getting the 73210 upgrade plus recovering these back to a garage. Recovering as in driving. Hello, this is voiceover out there, and I decided not to do that. Uh, this is a voiceover for reasons that I'll explain, but we're just going to fade out. That was the end of that episode. And I recorded an outro to that episode and said, that's it, we're done. And then the footage you're seeing now is a separate recording that I made to be the follow on, like part two episode of me driving these back to the garage. And while I was editing it, there's two things came up. One is that this isn't enough to make it worth the effort of making it a separate episode. I still haven't gone and got the as of 73 210 suspension yet but I want that to be a different thing I could use a tattering or something for that but what I wanted to do and my focus was to get the Tatra Force back to the garage because I needed to take it to Yukon so I have added about 15 minutes to the duration of this video and I'm going to time lapse the bejesus out of taking the two heavy trucks back to the garage uh, just marked out the route I'm going to do is pretty much exactly what I did on the way in. Um, but I'm just going to tack this on the end and time lapse it and then I'll do the voiceover as I'm going. Had a little bit of practice with voiceover in a recent Yukon episode. I didn't hate it. You didn't hate it. So I'm going to leave it in. Now, to be fair, for a lot of people, episode over, right? The, the, the truck has been recovered in hard mode. This is just driving it back to the garage. 
and I will not be offended at all if anybody doesn't want to watch this bit and just wants to tune out and get on with the next episode in the sequence. But if you are interested in seeing me drive back to the garage, um, I can tell you it's fairly uneventful. Uh, I have a slight fuel issue in the middle, but I, can, I, I resolve it. Not a big deal. Um, so there's not going to be any surprises in this. This muddy bit is horrible for that touch force. It is the Achilles heel of that truck. You can see that the Zix is coping with that mud no problem at all and is a mighty fine anchor to act as a winch vehicle to pull the touch of force forward. But that touch of force struggles in that mud. Uh, I, I kind of caterpillar for a little bit and then I'm going to move the Zix forward out of the way. Just let the Zix do its own thing and let the Satchel Force pull itself out with trees because it ends up being quicker. But this is the only bit of bad terrain on this route. So this is, I definitely think, compared to other routes I've seen people use, this is a good route to go and rescue the Zix in hard mode. Probably in any mode. If you're in normal mode, you're just going to recover it, right? You're not going to drive back through this. So you've only got to go through this once. But it is the only bit of this sort of death mud. And the force is just particularly weak in death mud. I still think it was the right vehicle to take. I still think the Tantra Force did me proud. Um, I'm happy with how the episode went. And I have chosen, and, and uh, this is an editorial decision, to leave this as one video rather than breaking it into two. Just because that's what I would rather watch, and then as a, so as a as a player of this series, I want to get on with other things. So I don't want to tie up weekends of special expeditions to basically drive back to a garage. Uh, maybe more sensible to have split this into unlocking Cosmodrome is part one, getting the Zix driving it back to the garage is part two. But that's not how I recorded it, and I've had to do this voiceover because the way that I narrated this was as a separate episode and it didn't make sense. So I'm, I'm slightly running out of fuel here and it starts causing me a concern because I'm worried that I won't get back to the garage. So I just redistribute a bit of fuel there. And then at the time of me recording this, I was a bit worried about this bit I'm coming up to now as to whether or not I could climb up this ice ledge, especially with a Zix without any chains. But look, look how easy it gets up over there. That thing is a beast. And then the force has got chains on, slightly smaller wheels, so it's not quite as easy for the force, even with its chains, but... Yeah, that Zix is, a, is an absolute savage. I put them on a rope because my hope is to get them back to fuel. And I have, by this time, identified fuel on the map not that far ahead of me. So at this point, I was thinking I could get to it. But then I'd decide discretion, better part of valor. Put all of the fuel that I've got in the force. Leave the Zix behind. A uh, slightly different route out so that I avoid the breaking ice that I had on the way in and take the force with its roof rack can loaf on to a little depot and I mark it there on the map. There's a scout fuel trailer in there and I didn't notice that on the way in otherwise I would have either towed it with me or at least filled my tanks up before I went any further. Um, I didn't notice it on the map before... I started the expedition. So I just drive in, grab some fuel. I think I'll take the loaf out and leave the loaf here. Unpack it. Yeah, fill the loaf up. And then... I started the wrong engine again because I thought I was in the in the force but I wasn't I was in the loaf yeah I just lift it out and I think right I'll leave the loaf here because it'll probably play a role in going and getting the 73 210 active suspension 
Um, and then the force goes back on its own to chuck some fuel into the Zix and they continue their journey onto the garage. So that's the only little bit of shenanigans I had to do really is a bit of fuel manipulation. This time lapse is five times speed. Uh, it's I've, I've done it because it's not particularly important footage. I'm just driving two trucks back to the garage, empty, no special cargo, no special danger. But yeah, hopefully it's not too fast for people. And then the music in the background is the uh, game soundtrack for Amur. And that's what I do with all of my episodes. If you haven't watched my other stuff, if you've just seen this special expedition, I record the game music uh, for each region. And then I play it over the top of that region. So I turn music off at the point of playing. So I play without any music. And then that allows me to put the correct soundtrack over the top of the game sound and me talking in a way that's a bit more continuous than if I recorded it out of the game and then when I cut or time lapse music is just a mess whereas this way I can have the real music from the game over the top of my time lapse without it having a problem. No big challenges. I thought that was going to tip, but I managed to save it. Got it onto that power pole. Pulled it forward. The Zix was on a rope anyway, so I wasn't too bothered. But the Zix didn't even blink. And I can't wait to start using the Zix in my main save. Let me zig when I should have zagged then. Missed the rocky ledge I was aiming for. And because the Zix is better at pulling on that muddy stuff, I put it in front for that last bit. And then here we are basically back at the garage. And now we'll drop out of the time lapse. So this is now back into real time. Zix gets back in the garage. And I do a little bit of uh, turn the engine off on the touch of force and leave it there. Disconnect it. Put the Zix in the garage, and now I have a little look at the customization options. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll put the Touch of Force back in the garage as well, just for completeness. But really, I'm interested in the Zix. Retain that so that I can then move it to Yukon, because I recorded this before that truck appeared in Yukon. So I need to basically buy a big engine, buy an advanced special gearbox, buy a heavy winch. There's no suspension upgrade, there's no tyre options, it's just big mud tyres, 61 inch mud tyres. But they're, they're brilliant. Uh, I decide to put, I think, the flat cap. If I remember rightly. Obviously couldn't quite make my mind up, but I put the flat cap on. And then frame add-ons, lots of choice. It's a real shame it doesn't do long logs, isn't it? Wouldn't it be amazing if it could do long logs? But basically it does almost everything else. And that trunk re repair supplies, 200 liters plus 600 repair points on a truck that's pretty fuel efficient anyway, and has a 380 liter tank. That is stunning. Uh, spare wheel gives you another 40 litres. So you're carrying 380 plus 240 litres of fuel on this truck. And as a high saddle specialist, obviously it doesn't have chains options. So there's going to be some icy asphalt roads where it's going to struggle. But as a high saddle truck, this is going to be a beast. And I can't wait to get using it in Yukon. 
Uh, flicking through the rest of the add-ons, it takes the big crane, it can load logs, it can do short logs but not medium logs, again, bit of a shame. Um, two slot sideboard, if you've got somebody else to crane it, that's probably two slots of cargo you can deliver anywhere in the game without any trouble. Looking through the bumper options, I think I picked that one. Yeah, I think I like the pattern of it with the, the black and grey striping as much as anything else. Trying to find roof lights that don't disable my roof rack. Uh, the exhaust put outrolled on because it points the exhaust down at the floor whereas the stock exhaust puts it straight out the side it's probably a bit more obstructive for camera view no choice on rims and then what color do i i can't remember what color i put on this i might be the black the striped one that matches that bumper that one probably pink's pretty vivid isn't it As that flash pass out, I quite like that in white, to be fair. I thought I did the blue and white camo. I can tell I can't make my mind up, right? Something that you can change at any point as well, so why am I spending so much time on this? Uh, I've gone for grey and white. Well, three shades of grey. Don't think I pay the five thousand for it. Oh, I do because it's a bodywork repair repair. So I'm gonna pay the five thousand on any truck that I've just got. Just to sort it out a little bit. It's got its repair points pre-filled, but not its fuel, which is to be and to be expected on the roof rack. It's a bit strange the repair points, I don't think it's consistent. Although that does look like it's got a bit of fuel in the roof rack, doesn't it, there? And then I think I'll leave the garage and sit enjoying the view of it. So hopefully I've been able to make this voiceover work. Hopefully it's not too horrible. Uh, it has got... See, it's got fuel in its roof rack, but not in its um, spare wheel add-on. So that's a bit strange, isn't it? You can see that there's fuel tanks in there. I, I noticed that, let them look. So that has deployed it with 200 litres of fuel in the roof rack, and it doesn't always do that. It's, I don't know whether it's a bug or whether it's random based on the vehicle. It might be the same bug that gave me some free fuel in the Kodiak in my Yukon series. Um, but yeah, that is the Zix 605R recovery start to finish it's a two and a quarter hour episode unfortunately but i hope you enjoyed the episode uh, i hope you agree with me that it's worth just doing it in one rather than trying to break it into chunks you've got a choice if you want to pause it or skip through it or whatever that's up to you how long you spend watching it but i think personally i prefer to see it as a continuous piece of rescue footage it works for me so hopefully it works for you but I'm going to wrap this episode here and hopefully see you all back in Yukon. But in the meantime, thank you very much and goodbye.